we are going to discuss the companies amendment act 2017 provisions with respect to section 177 section 177 you all know section 177 deals with audit committee audit committee just to give an introduction you know that companies act 2013 has some uh, committees sub committees of the board as mandatory uh, you know the various committees one you have audit committee hmm? then you have shareholders grievance committee then you have nomination and remuneration committee right and then you have csr sub committee right there are applicabilities for these things uh, which is helpful. but uh, you know strictly speaking these are the mandatory or you know statutory committees wherever it applies to a company you have to constitute it's the not a management committee it's the committee of the uh, board members audit committee you know shareholders grievance committee uh, nomination remuneration committee and csr committee there is an amendment uh, why it companies amendment act 2017 with respect to the audit committee we'll see what is that amendment and you all know that you know uh, especially being a, a final level students you all know that the company side gives n number of hands some powers to the audit committee audit, what is an audit committee an audit committee is a sub committee of the board exclusively devoted for looking the internal control financial controls risk management appointment of auditors fixing the remuneration reviewing their performance etc go one of very important um, you know power which has been entrusted to the audit committee is look into the transactions especially when the transactions are rendered by a director or where you know some some irregularities are been found at etc etc you know that but the amendment which now we are going to talk uh, which has been introduced by the company's amendment act 2017 does not cover related party transaction does not cover related party transaction which is part under section 188 mind it now we will see one by one what is the amendment introduced one if assume that if a transaction uh, has not been approved by an audit committee you all know that anything which is not be approved approved by the audit committee it can be uh, it will recommend that to the board and if the board is not accepting the same then the board will report that to the shareholders you all know the framework of the law here there is an amendment if the audit committee has not approved a transaction which is not a transaction covered under 188 that is it is not a related party transaction then it will it will uh, recommend that to the recommend that matter to the board of directors recommend means positively or negatively we don't know about the facts but it will uh, refer that matter to the board so first amendment is this whenever an audit committee is not approving a transaction which transaction those transaction which is not a related party transaction then that factor or that matter has to be reported to the board that is the basic one the second amendment here is if the amount of the transaction is up to rupees 1 crore not above 1 crore up to rupees 1 crore then if the transaction is entered without the approval from the audit committee then you have to take up to the audit committee if the if the audit committee is not recommending it if the audit committee is not approving it and if the audit committee is not ratifying it within a period of 3 months then hereafter that transaction will be voidable at the option of the audit committee earlier what was the law any transaction which is not approved by the audit committee it will go to the board and if the board uh, you know board may ratify not ratify this void at the option of the board now here up to 1 crore transactions a very important power has been vested with the audit committee that if the audit committee is not approving that transaction which is the transaction up to 1 crore rupees transaction then it should be put to the audit committee obviously it is not approving it it is not ratifying it within a period of 3 months then here after that transaction will be voidable at the option of the audit committee so that is a very important power now given to the you know audit committee then and if even though it at the option of the audit committee we know if the audit committee takes the views that to make the transaction void say for example what will be the consequence you all know section 166 powers uh, duties of directors there is something called an indemnification now that clause will be attracted here if the audit committee is not ratifying a transaction within 3 months it is voidable at the option of the audit committee and due to that if you analyze the transaction if it is proved that the transaction has made a loss to the company then the directors who are involved in it has to indemnify the loss to the company so that is the beautiful amendment which has been introduced i will list out in second the amendment what is the amendment which is introduced in section 177 one the audit committee has been at the power has been little bit more given 
regarding to transactions which is not in the best interest of the company but this transaction in this amendment does not cover only a transaction that is related party transaction apart from related party transactions if a transaction if the audit committee feels it is not in the best interest of the company then what is the option you have to give to the audit committee meeting audit committee will evaluate it and up to one crore transaction if the audit committee is not approving the same or it is not ratified by the audit committee then it is voidable at the option of the audit committee if so if it is voidable it is proved that the transaction is being given a loss to the company then the directors involved has to indemnify that loss amount to the company so that is the golden amendment now i conclude this session by saying an exemption to this amendment that no transaction between a holding company and its wholly owned subsidiary company is covered under this amendment that is an exemption to this amendment I repeat again even though this new powers has been given to uh, via the amendment in 177 it is not applicable to any transaction between a holding company and its wholly owned subsidiary company so this is a simple amendment but tricky you know in exam point of view they can make a beautiful practical question saying this one crore limit etc etc so make a master on that so this is the only amendment in subcommittees if there is no amendment in the other subcommittee earlier we had uh, you know seen a, a, an amendment in the csr subcommittee Uh, regarding the board composition otherwise in committee chapter or committee area the only amendment is with respect to this audit committee